Now we're in physical chemistry, chapter 17, section 14. We're going to talk about relaxation methods. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a system that's in equilibrium, and then we're going to change something about the system very quickly. So for example, let's say we have this fast reaction. H3O plus plus OH negative in equilibrium with 2H2O. This reaction happens extremely fast. Now we know the concentration of the H3O plus has to be equal to the concentration of the OH negative because of, you know, balance of charge. And that's going to be roughly equal to 0 0.001 molar. And that's going to be equal to 1.00 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Now K is going to be equal to 1.4 times 10 to the 11 per mole per second. Remember, K, K cannot be negative. So the half-life, T1 half, is going to be about ten, 7 times 10 to the negative 9 seconds, or 7 nanoseconds. Now relaxation is the time after equilibrium is perturbed until equilibrium is reached again. So we start with the system in equilibrium, we change something about the system, and then it's going to end up with in equilibrium again, a different equilibrium probably. So that's the relaxation time. So there are different methods of doing this. One is called the T-jump method, which stands for temperature jump. Capital T is temperature, remember. So if the change in the enthalpy, the standard enthalpy, is not equal to zero, then the reaction is um, oops, endothermic or exothermic. If the change of enthalpy is equal to zero, then the equilibrium constant doesn't depend on temperature. Now, if we do an electrical discharge or a high-power microwave pulse, that can change the temperature very quickly. The second method is called the P-jump method. Capital P stands for pressure. So let's say we have the reactants at low pressure, we have an inert gas at high pressure, and we have this boundary between them, then we rupture the boundary. That'll increase the pressure. The third is called the E-jump method, which is the electric field jump method. So here we're going to discharge a capacitor. Ca capacitor is like a rechargeable battery, but it can discharge right away instead of taking a long time. So we're going to have a sample. Our system is going to be between charged plates. And this will be good for ionic solution because ions mean charged particles, right? A fourth method is called flash photolysis where obviously we just add a flash of light to add energy to the system. So now let's talk about the kinetics of relaxation. For example, let's say we have A in equilibrium with B, so we have the forward um, rate constant and the reverse rate constant. And this is going to be a first order reaction. In the in textbook, they're going A plus B in equilibrium with C instead. So we have um, relaxation time. It's the time to go down a certain amount. Like I said, go back to equilibrium. So we have the uh, derivative of the concentration of A with respect to time is equal to minus Kf prime times the concentration of A plus Kr prime times the concentration of B at whatever temperature. So at equilibrium, remember, the derivative of the concentration of A is equal to, with respect to time is equal to zero. So minus Kf prime times the concentration of A at equilibrium prime plus Kr prime times the concentration of B at equilibrium prime is equal to zero. So we have Kf prime times the concentration of A at equilibrium prime is equal to K reverse prime times the concentration of B at equilibrium. That's, this is the original equilibrium before we perturb the system. So now we're going to increase the temperature suddenly, somehow, by adding a bunch of energy. So afterwards, instead of having Kf prime, we're going to have Kf, and instead of having Kr prime, we're going to have Kr. Now, for a short time, of course, the concentrations are going to stay the same. So we have Kf times the concentration A at equilibrium is equal to Kr times the concentration of B at equilibrium. This is after the new equilibrium, at the new equilibrium. So if time is equal to zero, the concentration of A naught is going to be equal to concentration A at equilibrium prime. So the concentration of A naught minus the concentration of A at equilibrium, that's going to be X sub O. So we have X concentration of A minus the concentration of A at equilibrium, that's going to be equal to X. 
So the concentration of B minus the concentration of B at equilibrium is going to equal to minus X by conservation of max because whatever we gain in A is going to be equal to the loss in B. So we have the derivative of the concentration of A with respect to time. It's going to equal to minus KF times the concentration of A plus KR times the concentration of B. That's at the new equilibrium after perturbation. Substitute for A and B. So we have the concentration of A is going to be equal to the concentration of A at equilibrium plus X. The concentration of B is going to be equal to minus X plus the concentration of B at equilibrium. So we have the derivative of the concentration of A with respect to time. It's going to be equal to minus KF times X plus the concentration of A at equilibrium plus KR times X plus the concentration of B at equilibrium. So we have the derivative of the concentration of A with respect to time. It's going to be equal to minus KF times X, minus KF times the concentration of A at equilibrium, plus KR times X, plus KR times the concentration of B at equilibrium. See how we factored out. Now remember, at, a, at equilibrium, minus KF times the concentration of A is equal to minus KR times the concentration of B. So we're going to substitute and go. The derivative of the concentration of A with respect to time is equal to minus KF times the concentration of A at equilibrium minus KF times X plus KF times the concentration of A at equilibrium minus KRX. So we get the derivative of the concentration of A with respect to time is equal to minus KFX plus KRX or factor out the X and we get minus KF plus KR times X. So we get Concentration A minus the concentration A at equilibrium is equal to X. So we get the derivative of A with respect to time minus the derivative of A at equilibrium with respect to time is equal to the derivative of X with respect to time. So we get the derivative of A at equilibrium with respect to time is equal to zero since equilibrium doesn't change. So and the derivative of a with respect to time is equal to the derivative of x with respect to time. So we get the derivative of x with respect to time is equal to minus kf plus kr times x. So this is a differential equation. So we're going to get dx over x is equal to minus kf plus kr dt. So we, got, we separated the variables. We got the x's on one side. So we can integrate that. So we're going to integrate from x naught to x of 1 over x with respect to x is equal to minus kf plus kr times the integral from 0 to t dt. So we get the natural log of x over x naught or x sub 0 equal to minus kf plus kr times t. Solving for x, we get x is equal to x sub 0 times e to the minus kf plus kr times t. Now we're going to use this symbol tau to represent the relaxation time. So we get 1 over tau is equal to kf plus kr. So we get x is equal to x to the sub 0 times e to the minus t over tau. So the change in x is equal to the change in x sub 0 times e to the minus t over tau. So the relaxation time tau is the amount of time it takes for the concentration the concentration of A minus concentration of A at equilibrium, which is X, to drop by 1 over E of its infinite value X sub 0, or initial value of X sub 0. So that was an elementary first order reaction. And remember, E is the natural lump number, approximately 2.718. So remember, on the handout, relaxation time is T star instead of tau. It depends on which you know, book originally stuff comes from. Different books use different nomenclature. It makes it harder to use more than one book. So when we have the change in x sub zero divided by e is the fraction that you've lost so far, the fraction of the reactant. So for a first order reaction, the relaxation time doesn't depend on the concentration. For higher order reactions, the rela relaxation time does depend on the initial, or it does depend on the concentration. For example, let's say we have A plus B in equilibrium with C, this, and this is an elementary reaction. Then 1 over tau will end up being K2 plus K1 times the concentration A plus the concentration of B. 
So application of relaxation time is to find the rate constants. For example, let's say that tau is two microseconds when you have the concentration A equal to B is equal to one molar. But the tau is equal to 3.3 microseconds when you have the concentration of A is equal to B at 0 0.5 molar. From that, we can find K1 and K2. So method one of doing that is the graphical method. So we have one over tau on the vertical axis, and then we have the concentration A plus the concentration of B on the horizontal axis. We graph these two against each other, and we end up with a slope is equal to K1, and the y-intercept is going to be equal to K2. Now remember though, I mentioned just already that K is always positive. So 1 over tau is equal to K2 plus K1 times the concentration A plus the concentration of B. So that means we have y equals, uh, let's see, M, X plus B format, just a different order. Now method two is using simultaneous equations, just algebra. So we have one over 2.0 times 10 to the negative six seconds, and that's equal to K2 plus K1 times one molar plus one molar. And we also have one over 3.3 times 10 to the negative six seconds, and that's equal to K2 plus K1 times 0.5 molar plus 0.5 molar. We have two equations and two unknowns, you just use algebra to solve that. And you get K1 is equal to two times 10 to the five, K2 is equal to one times 10 to the five, so the K equilibrium is just K1 over K2 is equal to two. Now, unfortunately, we can't go from K to the relaxation time, just from relaxation time to K.